dairy is actually tied to a reduction in inflammatory markers in the blood. And it's also tied to a better fertility outcomes in patients who have anovulatory cycles. So, so that's, that's kind of where I start. Um, I, I love you already. <laughs> Can I just say like, it's so refreshing to hear someone from, you know, non-medical care support that because I, I see so many people where they go, I stopped eating dairy. I stopped eating gluten. I'm like, how long can that go on for? It doesn't sound practical. And my read is that's probably not a great idea. So I love, love, love the fact that, that you say that, but sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go on. No, no, that's okay. I will say, I mean, we do need to be a little bit more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like if somebody says, you know, I want to try the dairy removal, we don't have a lot of physical symptoms that we're going off of. Then I start to dig a little bit deeper, right? Because there are a couple of other things, particularly in the endometriosis population that we're a little bit more prone to. And we definitely want to be attentive to these things when it comes to kind of lowering the overall inflammatory load. 